Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another ZD Toys Iron Man figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are going to be taking a look at the Avengers Infinity War Mark 50 luxury version. Essentially what this is is a ZD Toys Iron Man figure with a ton more accessories. So yeah, I'm super excited to get this guy out here. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and a points based reward system. What we are going to do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. Here of course we have the box art and while it's done in a similar style to the other ZD Toys Iron Man figures we've already reviewed on the channel, it's also a lot larger. We do have an image of the figure himself on the front of the box and the entire thing is printed in this interesting metallic finish. Avengers Infinity War and Mark 50, Infinity War on the side, then of course a bunch of product shots on the back. And as you can see that metallic finish extends all the way around. On the inside though, you can see the Mark 50 himself plus a few of the parts and pieces. He does come with another tray though down below. This might be the most jam packed release from ZD Toys that I personally have ever seen. I hope that going forward we start to see more and more of these deluxe releases. First in hand impressions though are pretty darn positive. While I haven't reviewed the Mark 50 previously, I have reviewed their first version of the Mark 85 which is also a very sleek suit of armor. Underneath this top tray we do have another, so what we are going to do now is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Here we have all the parts and pieces. Now starting off with the display base first, it's simple yet very effective. It's hexagonal, it's nice and slim and low profile and you've got Avengers Infinity War and Mark 50 printed on the surface. As for the arm, it's articulated at multiple different sections. The screws are exposed so if you find it getting a little bit loose over time you can tighten them right up. You also have a spring loaded waist clamp up top so you can have him in the air. Now don't fret, I know it looks like there are a ton of parts and pieces here and there genuinely are but a lot of them are double ups, you get one for either side. Speaking of which, the lobster claw is exactly that. It pegs in at the forearm joint and this guy does come with an instruction sheet so make sure you are reading it. But I really do like the way this is painted. The sculpt work is super crisp so when you put the red and the gold and the silver over the top it highlights all of that absolutely stunning detail. On the inside you have a frosted white section so it kind of looks like the inside of a blaster. You also get one blade for either side and this just slots into his hand. The blade section is translucent plastic and once again you've got the silver, gold and glossy metallic red on the surface. You do get the flight thrusters or stabilizer piece that pegs into his back. It is done in a rubbery plastic so you don't have to worry about snapping anything. There aren't any moving parts and pieces like the larger scale Hot Toys one but I totally understand why it's a very small and would otherwise be very fragile if they'd done that. You do get two different styles of shield. This one does have a peg port in the back that you can attach this handle to, but two more handles up the top so you can slot his forearms into it. There are a ton of sculpted in crevices and tech detail on the surface here, plus some blue which I'm pretty sure are meant to replicate some light up sections. You also though get a much larger shield. This one does have multiple ports on the back so you can remove this handle as it goes flying and peg it in wherever you want it to be. Now this is a rather heavy piece so it might drag his arms down over time. You also get two other bladed weapons, this massive one which is just done in a nice shiny silver 
and this one which is known as the katar. You can see his hand is pre-attached, so it doesn't work in the exact same way as this one. This replaces his entire forearm where this pegs into his hand. They've also done this jagged section on the back, so if you have Thanos holding this and stabbing Tony with it, then it kind of looks like he's ripped it off Tony's arm. You also get some blast effects, these we've seen before from ZD Toys, and they look perfectly serviceable. They're a nice translucent yellow on the top section, and they go down to a more fiery orange down below. You do get four of them, so you can peg them into his hands and his feet. Speaking of hands, you get a full array. Interestingly enough though, for the repulsor blasting hands, they've ditched these pads that go on the back of the hands themselves. Usually they would be pre-sculpted with an angle, a kick up towards the rear, but it seems that ZD Toys decided, no, they aren't essential, we're just going to go without them. I mean, yes, okay, if it works for the aesthetics of the suit, I understand, but at the same time we've seen it done before by other companies. What we are going to do now though, is get the Mark 50 himself out here, and take a closer look. Here we have him, standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that, and for the most part he looks pretty darn good. Although for some reason, just standing there he does look slightly goofy. And yes, if you want to blame my posing, absolutely go for it. But they've made a couple of interesting choices that make it so that when you have him literally just standing there, something looks a touch off. And we will discuss why that's the case in just a second. But one of the biggest reasons why I personally love ZD Toys is that they go all out with the sculpt work and the paint applications. They don't try and cut corners anywhere. These are relatively cost-effective figures, yet they look like they're punching far above the weight or price class that they actually sit in because they're covered in paint. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. Here we have him, up close and personal. Now in just a second we will be trying out some of the weapon attachments, just because I'm curious to see what they look like on him, and also to see how it all works. But before we do that, we do have to tackle the paint applications and the sculpt work. We may as well talk about the paint first. This guy looks stunning. He is covered from head to toe in this glorious metallic hot rod red. They've also mixed in this vibrant gold, some silver, and some gunmetal as well. They've applied a very fine pinstripe along the sections where the silver and gold would meet, because if you think about it, at this smaller scale, that could come across a little bit messy if that separation wasn't there. It's a very nice touch that sets this guy over the top. People have asked me, Justin, do you prefer the Marvel Legends Mark 50 or the ZD Toys one? And my answer is, just look at this guy, and I'm pretty sure you'll figure out which one is my preferred option. There is one complaint I have though, and it's to do with the way they've painted the arc reactor and the eyes. Or I should say, the way they haven't. Now I understand, if this guy's an LED version, then the lights will do the talking for you. But because there is no way of actually making the arc reactor and eyes look like they are on, simply paint them. You've done exactly that with all of these mini arc reactors and they look great. Just add some blue paint behind the detail on the chest and it will actually look like the suit is powered up. But other than that, I have no other complaints with the way this guy is painted. As for the sculpt work, the suit is very sleek. It looks exactly like how the Mark 50 should. The head sculpt is small, but still in proportion to the rest of the body. I do, again, have one minor complaint, and it's to do with how the arms work. If you want to have everything looking as seamless as possible with these shoulder pads, then the arms kind of stick out to the side. If you pull them out, you can get them nicely hanging down by his sides, but then you introduce some gapping up the top. 
The best way I've found to mitigate it is to compress everything down, swivel the bicep in and give him a slight bend at the elbow, and then it gives him this rather buff look, but still, at certain angles, it looks a little bit goofy. If you have him in a dynamic pose, totally understand, not a big issue. But if you have him standing there in a hall of armor, then it might look a little bit goofy. Overall though, this guy is still my favorite smaller scale Mark 50. As for trying out some of the weapon accessories, now you will see more of them on him towards the end of the video when we pull out a couple of poses, but for now I have the thruster section pegged into his back and it fits just okay. For some reason mine sits very loose and doesn't really peg in as tight as I'd want it to, but from the front it looks great. From the side you can see a little bit of gapping and that's just a byproduct of it not wanting to peg in all the way. As for the weapons that swap out onto his forearms, they fit very securely and they look great. I have the blade on one side and the lobster claw on the other. I'm not sure exactly which one I'm going to go with in my display, but do let me know what is your preferred combination of weapons for the Mark 50 down below. I'm just really happy that they were able to engineer a joint that can be removed so that you can peg in different weapons. You literally just pop off the forearm, you're left with this mushroom peg, and you pop on whatever weapon you want to have there. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the new ZD Toys Mark 50 on the left and the Mark IV on the right. And interestingly enough, the Mark IV is a little bit taller, but I guess that checks out because the Mark IV is a big, bulky, kind of retro style armor, whereas the Mark 50 is super sleek. It's nanotech, so it makes sense. Does this mean the Mark 50 will scale better with your Marvel Legends? No, unfortunately I don't think it will. It's still slightly oversized, but it does in my opinion at least, scale well with the rest of the ZD Toys line. Next up here we have a Marvel Legends figure. Now this happens to be the only Marvel Legends Iron Man figure that I currently own, and it's the Gamerverse one. Now say what you will about the size difference here, because the Mark 50 is significantly bigger no matter which way you look at it, it's going to work for some but it's not going to work for others. I totally get it. The one thing though that I really do like about the Marvel Legends figure is that the eyes and the arc reactor are painted. That's something that going forward I think ZD Toys really needs to start doing, unless they're planning on putting LEDs in every figure. Just going over articulation. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I am willing to go. Now starting off with the head sculpt, it is on a ball joint, but also a hinge. So it will look forward and back, swivel, and then a teeny amount of pivot side to side. Now the arms can actually be extended out from the body, as you can see there is now a gap on this side, and the shoulder pad can be hinged outwards to give you an absolutely awesome range of motion going up and of course going forward and back. Then after you've put the arm in position, literally just compress everything back to make it as seamless as possible. Swivel at the bicep, a double bend at the elbow that goes the full way, plus a ball joint for the wrist peg. The torso can be extended up so it crunches forward and back, swivels and pivots side to side. The legs can also be dropped down as you can see. This side is now sitting a lot lower than this one is, so it goes a little bit further forward. It will go out to there as the top part of the leg tucks into that joint area. Swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee that does get you past 90, and of course a hinge and swivel down here for the ankle. Just wrapping up on the ZD Toys Iron Man Mark 50 luxury version. Now going into this, I thought I knew what to expect. I've reviewed quite a few ZD Toys Iron Man figures, 
but none have ever been quite like this guy. Now the figure himself, which we will talk about first, then we'll tackle the accessories, is similar to previous releases. The articulation works in the same way with a bunch of different pull-out joints to get you more range of motion, and the paint applications and sculpt work are glorious. He's covered from head to toe in metallic, vibrant hot rod red. You've got the gold, you've got the silver, you've got the gunmetal, and you've got individual panel line sections, so it breaks up the look of the multiple different metallic colours on top of one another. The only complaint I have that I mentioned earlier is that they didn't paint the arc reactor and the eyes. So the figure himself gets a tick from me. This is my new favourite smaller scale Iron Man figure and as for the Marvel Legends one, he's quite dated now. I'm sure Hasbro could do a better job nowadays, but for me, this one is the one to go with, even though he will be slightly taller than your other Marvel Legends. Now, the accessories. The real big bonus that you're getting over and above the other versions of a smaller scale Mark 50. He comes with a ton of awesome stuff. It's movie specific, you get multiples, so you get one lobster claw for either side, one blade for either side, multiple different blast effects, a flight stand, and of course, two different massive shields. This guy is stacked, and I'm all for it. I love all of the little parts and pieces that come with this guy, and honestly, I'm glad they did this, because I don't think it would feel like a complete package without it. I'm hoping we get something similar with a future version of the Mark 85. So at the end of the day, yes, I do think this set is worth it, but I will be keeping my eyes peeled for a future LED version that fixes the dead eye and chest reactor look. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and a points based reward system. While you're down there, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection. And of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.